Well, hello, welcome to No Makeup Monday. I am Felisa Kendall, and I am so glad to be with you today. So the purpose of No Makeup Monday is it's our girl time. It's time for us to share and to talk about those things that concern us. And we talk about them in the restroom, in the bathroom, because the bathroom is a place of intimacy, it's a place of cleansing, it's a place of revealing, and it's a place where we are not ashamed. And so I'm so happy um, to be with you today on this No Makeup Monday. So I want to talk to you about something that the Lord showed me back in 2020. But I have not been able to share it. I have not been able to share it with anyone just because I just not publicly. Anyway, I've talked about it, you know, casually and shared my concerns with, you know, people who are in my inner circle, but I haven't shared it publicly. So I want to um, just talk to you all and I am spraying my hair. This is Thank God it's natural. I found this, y'all, because my hair is really, really dry. And I I use old school sulfur, sulfur aid, so don't come for me with that. But I have to do what I feel is best for me and my hair. So it's old school sulfur aid, and I put rosemary oil in it. And so far, it's been working really good. I'm locked, so I can put some oil just on my scalp a little bit. I don't use a whole lot of the Sulfur 8. I've been using it after I wash my hair just so that I can just try to um, put some Sulfur on it because it seems to work best to keep my scalp from being so dry. And so this TGIN, this is rose water, and it has a couple of other ingredients in it. I would read it to you, but I don't have my glasses on, so the writing is so fine, I can't read that without my glasses. And of course, um, rosemary. Rosemary is very good. Now, I think this week I'm going to apply more on my scalp than I normally do, because what I've done for this last application was to add this to the Sulfur 8 and. It worked really good. My scalp was not dry or anything like that. But I'm going to tell you something that the Lord um, just brought to my attention back in 2020. And that was, I started noticing, okay, of course, you know, that's when the pandemic and everything was like really, really on and popping. And so, you know, people were getting vaccinated. I did not get vaccinated. And glory be to God. I've never had COVID ever, and I decree and I declare that I never will. And so by the grace of God, I um, was like, no, I'm not getting that vaccine. I don't know what's in it. I don't even like taking antibiotics. I'm definitely not getting a, a vaccination that I don't know anything about, especially as an adult, and I can make my own decisions. That was a no. And so um, during that time, I started to take a lot of herbs and a lot of vitamins and things like that and to be more conscious about what I ate and what went into my body. And so I started buying fruits and vegetables and things like that. But I noticed with some of the fruit, this seedless, you know, this seedless label and this, um, what is it, uh, genetically modified foods. I was like, what is, what is this all about? So I started purchasing uh, fruit and I noticed with like the apples, they were seedless and y'all, they were not turning brown. One day I had purchased it and I was at home and just, you know, just enjoying the evening. And I started cutting the, um, the apple at a couple of minutes past or so. And I noticed while I was eating the part, the apple part that I wasn't eating was not turning brown. I was like, oh my goodness, why is this apple not turning brown? So y'all, that really, really bothered me. So fast forward to 2023, I said, Lord, something is not right. We have seedless watermelon, seedless grapes, seedless apples. Y'all, I have even seen a seedless cucumber. I was like, oh no. And now they're putting these organic labels on all of the foods and I'm thinking, okay, if this is organic and this is real, what is this? And if it's seedless, who's creating it? 
Like, where is this food being created? So um, if you've been following me for the month of June, we've been talking about exercising our discernment. And so I want you to pay attention to the world around you. Y'all, even some of the meat is like, so, no, mm -mm. y'all, the signs are all around us that something is not right. And you have a choice as to what you want to eat, what you want to put into your body. But I want you to pay attention to the world around you. Pay attention to your atmosphere. Pay attention to the grass. Pay attention to the bees. Pay attention to nature. All right? Pay attention to nature. And I am telling you, the wickedness that is going on in the land. And I'm going to tell you what got many, many people. It didn't get me because the Lord had my eyes wide open. While people were fighting over, you know, Black Lives Matter, police brutality, and all of these things, the enemy was sneaking in through the back door. Through the back door. A lot of this stuff, y'all, it was it was a decoy so that the enemy could shoot in. You know, we have to learn the strategies of the enemy. Sometimes it's best to sit back and be quiet. So many people are making, talking so much trash and just being so, I'm a black woman and I'm not speaking against black people, but sometimes it's not about being black. Sometimes it's about what the enemy is doing and what he's using as a decoy. You know, it's kind of like when I was in the classroom, one student, all he had to say was, yo mama, yo mama. And that got that other student all in an uproar, all just distracted. He's the one that's in trouble. And the one that said your mama, he got away because the one who responded to the verbal, you know, the, the, the verbal threat or whatever, he is the one that got in trouble. So what I'm saying is sometimes power all the time, I'm sorry, power is in humility and our ability to close our mouth Assess the, assess the situation and then know how to respond. It's not always as obvious as many of you thought that it was. A lot of this stuff that's been going on, it had nothing to do with Black Lives Matter. It had nothing to do with Donald Trump. It had nothing to do with the election, but it had everything to do with the agenda of the enemy. And if you are not discerning, if you are not discerning you will be chasing a decoy and not the true villain. Say law. So with this seedless generation, it comes, um, what is it? Genesis 1, I have my notes right here. Genesis 1 and 11. And it talks about the beauty of God's plan. How God always, always has a seed for his creation. He said that we would bear fruit after our own kind. Thus he created Adam and Eve. Thus he created us in his likeness, in his image. Y'all, this homosexuality and this same-sex attractiveness, it is all a part of this trying to create a seedless generation. And if we don't open up our eyes, we will continue to chase a decoy. So I want to encourage you to spend time with Holy Spirit. And I know that there are many of you who have been in the Lord for, for a very, very long time. And guess what? That can be a plus and it can be a negative. Because the Holy Spirit, he is such a an amazing, an amazing, an amazing person whom the Lord has given to us, whom we often take for granted as saved as we are because we depend on the knowledge that we have. But we live in a world with supernatural forces that are not operating from human knowledge. Demons know the Bible probably better than you. So our greatest defense is humility and walking closely with Holy Spirit. 
because the Holy Spirit can reveal things that you have never read. So I just want to encourage you to pray for the United States of America. Pray for the United States of America. And our problem is not a love problem. Our problem is an obedience problem. So that's No Makeup Mondays. I want you to be encouraged and I love you. And make sure you go and spread the tea. Spill the tea on somebody else.